Donna Schwartz here from the Everything Saxophone Podcast. We're at the NAM 2024 show. Uh, the podcast episodes from the NAM 2024 show are being sponsored by Robner Products. They're celebrating 50 years. I'm at the Van Doren booth here with Sylvan Carton, and we've been on the podcast together, oh gosh, it's been a number of years at this point, but there are a number of new offerings for saxophone players over here. I'm just going to put that in front of my face so you could see this. We're going to talk about a bunch of these mouthpieces for sure. So welcome to the podcast again. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. All right. T let's talk. You talked about the profile, uh, the profile mouthpieces over here for classical yeah. players. So we uh, came out with the profile series, which is our newest series of classical mouthpieces uh, a couple of years ago. The AP3 and the SP3 are both alto and soprano mouthpieces. And we just extended that line with the tenor and baritone mouthpieces this year. So we have the TP4. Cool. And we have the BP3. So, and the, um, I love the AP3 and the SP3. They're very, very versatile, colorful, classical mouthpieces that are e easy to control, but still have like the, um, this focus that you want with, with a good classical sound. The SP3, I, I love as a general soprano mouthpiece. It, it works just across the board, any style. It's just a beautiful sounding mouthpiece. Intonation's great on it too. The TP4, I just I haven't had too much experience with because it just came out, but it's a very it's got a very beautiful round and clear sound. So it's not a bright mouthpiece by any means, but it's it's got a nice clear focus. Sometimes I feel like tenor classical mouthpieces can get a little can push a little bit of the mid range a little too much, a little low mids, and kind of make it a little more of a muddy, a, a muddy, a little bit more of a muddy sound. And that's that's been my critique of you know the classical tenor saxophone in general. Yeah, yeah. And um, the TP4 really does clear all that up, and it's got a nice, beautiful, round, kind of pure sound. Awesome. And uh, same with the baritone, the BP3, also a nice, clear, focused sound, and it's a uh, um, gives you, which I think gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of expression. Uh, you know, we still do have the. Obviously, the Optimum and the V5 line, they both offer a kind of different things on opposite ends. The like Optimum line being more of the centered, focused, little darker, kind of a darker color sound, and the um, V5 being a little more brilliant, more uh, more projection, more top end kind of. Got and it. And the, the profile series all across the board is kind of in between the two. Get, Kind of, kind of the best of all the worlds, and I, I really love them. They're, they're really great. That's really cool, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show the tenor one a um, little bit closer to the camera, so you can get a little bit of an idea here of the inside of this, and also I'd li kind of like to do that, so you get an idea. All right, it's a really nice looking mouthpiece. Yeah, another feature is uh, it's kind of uh, the beak shape is a, it's a nice, it's a more slender beak. Um, it, yeah, it's kind of in between the Optimum and the V5 series. Not so flat as the V5, but just it's, it's got a good feel too. So, what there about the uh, tip opening sizes? Uh, they're comp it's there is kind of moderate classical tip opening. So, like a, I would compare them closer, you know, to the fours, to the Optimum T4. They're in that zone. Just they work well with threes, number three reads and. That's yeah. what I was going to ask next. And it would, uh, well, I guess. At three and three and a half. But like, I would say start, try them all with threes and see how, see how that feels. Cause that's, that's a good, that'll work. And, and, and we're, I'm going to assume it's going to be the, uh, the blue box threes. Yeah. Blue, Vandor, um, blue box threes. That's what I'm talking about. Got exactly. it. Awesome. Blue box threes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Cause we are at the Van Dorn booth. Okay. So we have to be But that, sure. that's, that's for, that's different for everybody. Also like just that's in true. terms of resistance and what will work best. So right. but that's a good strength to start with on these. For sure, awesome. All right, and then you have something else. We also have a redesigned Java, the T75 Java Plus, cool. and this is basically it's it's very similar to the T75 Java, which we've had for a long time, but with a slightly different beak shape. So, a, a, which uh, you know, it's going to fit a little different in the mouth. Um, and it gives you a little bit more of a robust kind of tone, so a bit bigger of a sound. Uh, 
um, a little warmer, but and also a little punchier. So, oh, really right. a really nice, a really nice change for the T75. Okay, so for the T75, from what I, I've tried it, I know that can be a pretty bright mouthpiece. So what you're saying, the, the differentiator between the T75 and now the the Plus, this has a little bit more, maybe body to the sound. Yeah, exactly. Got a it. A little more, a little more depth, and so gives it a little more umph. I guess. So. That's awesome. I, I like these. It's a really nice direction for the T75 to go in. Yeah, for sure. And and tip opening sizes for this mouthpiece. It's the same as the T75. So okay. exactly this that that's that part hasn't changed, but Got just it. a little bit of the aesthetic of the tone and the shape of the beak changed. And I mean, anytime you change anything that with your how wide open your mouth goes, that's going to change how it feels, and it, it really flows evenly and. Yes. I, I'm so glad you great. said that because most people aren't aware of that, you know, I know for me, uh, and there's a lot of people too that have like TMJ, you know, uh, some jaw problems and stuff like that. And sometimes it's really hard to have a, a, a large beak, you know, so I always need like the slimmer profiles for myself, but it's really important to, you know, understand that aspect. And, and like he was saying, you know, you have to take that into consideration. So that's really awesome. Now, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so you can relax into playing the mouthpiece. And it's, yes. That's good. That's that's the word, actually relaxing when you're playing. Because if you're too tense when you're playing, you know, it's going to cut your sound off and it's not going to be a great experience. And we want to have fun and we want to be relaxed when we're playing. So that's a great point. I'm so glad you brought that up. You yeah. know what I wanted to ask you, too? Um, with the, you have synthetic clarinet reeds. Let's talk a little bit about that because we sure. do have some people that do double. Yeah. Um, well, we just came out with some synthetic with a Vandoren synthetic clarinet reed, the VK1, we came out with that last year, and that that was a uh, premiered at NAM last year, and uh, that's it. It feels like a clarinet reed. I mean, that's like the the best thing I could say. It's it's a clarinet reed, and that's I've tried a fair amount of other synthetics, and they they feel like a synthetic reed. This one really, I, I was switching it between the VK1 and a Blue Box traditional, and honestly felt like a at, at a certain point, I got lost. Which one am I playing? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it, it's it, it's a great choice for a synthetic read on, on the clarinet, and that the strengths equivalents run between like basically a two and a half and a three and a half on the blue box for the VK ones. And um, I mean, the nice thing with the synthetics is you you just pick them up and you play them, and you you don't have to break them in or anything like that. It's, it's yeah, just, it just it plays, and I. If you play solely synthetics, I would recommend always having a couple that you kind of rotate between, so because eventually they do wear out and they, they do flex to to your mouthpiece if you play it a lot. But I mean, I had I played on one for a month solid, a couple hours a day, and it didn't change. Like after a month, it was still it still felt good, and I compared it to new ones, and it felt very like felt similar so all right that, that's great you okay so now let me go on that track how long do you think and i know it's different for each player and stuff like that how long do you think the synthetic reeds will last you know um we we design them and we expect them to last at least like the equivalent of like two boxes of reeds like that's wow. you know so i in terms of time it's always hard to say because everybody has a different way of playing and they're practicing and how much they put in but if it, it kind of would be equivalent to a couple boxes of reeds. So if a couple boxes of reeds last you a couple months, one synthetic reed of ours, the one of the VK ones, should last a couple months. Oh, that's um, really cool. That's great. That, that's yeah. it. I have. I know a couple people. Actually, a good friend of mine. He's he he bought some back in July, and he's he bought two of them, and he's still playing on those two now. And he plays a lot of clarinet. He's a wow great clarinetist, and 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 he's just picked up another couple just to kind of have as backups for his but they've been they've worked for him for six seven months <laughs> and that's awesome and, and here's the thing you know again some benefits for synthetics for sure where we live although not today because it was it was a little bit raining in the morning but it's very dry it can get very hot um so dry hot you know conditions also um high altitude that's the other thing too you know people don't realize that th that affects your reeds it affects your cane reeds but if you use a synthetic reed you don't have to worry about that. Also, places that are too humid, you know, that also affects the reeds as well. So those of you that are in living in places where you have, you know, whether it's extreme temperatures or, or some aspect of extreme weather or whatever, this is something to definitely consider. And if you're a doubler, you know, you got to grab the clarinet right away 
this is a you know it's a great choice for sure. Yeah, no, that's it, it's pretty great for that. Like I, I when I premiered the read last year, I remember at soundcheck I finished soundcheck I played I put my clarinet down, I picked up my clarinet three hours later to play and it was I, I started playing and I, and I thought about it at, like five minutes later I was like wait I didn't. I didn't do anything. I just picked up my clarinet. Yeah, like that was that was kind of tremendous. It is. It's yeah. It's gold. <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah. You know, it's it's a great experience for and, sure. And the, you know, I didn't feel like I was sacrificing in terms of tone or anything like that. So, which is in the in the past, I've always felt like it's synthetics. They can respond and they're like that. But I, this one really feels like it. It responds like a clarinet read, and I didn't have to adapt to it. Either, and the so. technology is just getting so much better and better, and yeah, yeah, you know this is benefits too for you know um, for music educators, for your students, you know, for your students that also may be doubling, but also marching band types of situations as well. I would think, you know, yeah, it's definitely. Like if you if you're out in the elements, it's yes. nice to have something you can count on. Yes, for sure, and that's also not going to chip. It it can chip, but not chip as it's, easily. It's still a it's still a read it's got a very fine tip and it you still have to take care of it i, I would i wouldn't want to put it to the test <laughs> yeah, yeah don't do it's that. it's a <laughs> it's it's not came but it's still a, we've got a very fine tip and it it's still a read so the cool thing though is that you could also sterilize it that's the cool thing yeah, so yeah could, definitely yeah it's it's still a read but it's not fibrous like a cane so you you can clean it just and spray down and wipe it Absolutely, yeah. and we were talking beforehand. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it now, but there's thoughts about you know synthetic for alto coming down the pike. Yeah, well, we're definitely uh, we're working on developing you know synthetics for for alto and this, all the saxophones, and eventually I hope bass, clarinet, and all that. But yeah, the, I believe alto. We'll see. We'll see if it when it happens. But um, that's I'm looking forward to to that. Yeah, hopefully by the next NAM show. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. It, it was a little tough Donna. to see him because the booth is always crowded here, but it's so great to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you, Donna. Thanks for having me.